Hey guys, it's Landon from Redefined Horizons. This is another video that I am doing that shows you how to use some basic tools in Inkscape. Wanted to do some new videos since Inkscape is at version 1.3. It's come come quite a ways since I did, did the original Inkscape videos. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the text tools. In the last video, I showed you just a little bit about how the SVG coordinate system worked. So to draw text in Inkscape, you're going to use this little tool right here. This is the text tool. You click on that, left click on it, and then you can left click again and drag. That kind of sets your bounding box for your text, and then you can just start to type. Now, you can see that my text is really hard to read, and that's because of my fill and stroke settings. So I'm going to come into, um, so all text in Inkscape gets a fill and a stroke, believe it or not. So the reason that's so hard to read is because it, it, it has a stroke. So we're going to turn the stroke off and we're going to give it a fill. And so now you can see it's a little easier to read. Now, we obviously have a problem with our line spacing. I'm going to show you how to fix that in a minute. Okay, but I want to show you if you double click on it, you get these grips. You can change the height and the width of the text and it will word, word wrap in Inkscape. Now, if you get your box too small, the text goes away, so that obviously doesn't work. But you can get to that anytime with a double click. You can move the text and rotate the text just like you can other shapes. Sorry. Okay. Now, if you want, you can double click to edit the text, but I don't normally do that. If you come over here to your right hand pane, there is a tab for text. When you activate the text, when you activate the text tool, you can set your font. So we can go to Arial if we want. If your font supports weights, you will see that there. Um, so you can you can do that, and then you can edit your text. Okay, I don't normally mess with this, but there's some different things you can do in here. Um, but the, so mo you know, mainly I'm in the font the font box. By the way, you can set your so size here as well, and the text allows you to edit the text. Now, let's talk about how you position text and how you get it to line up on a baseline grid because those things are important. Now, the text has a special snap, so when you move it around, it will snap to your bounding boxes. As, as 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 a rectangle or other shape would, but it also has a special snap called the text baseline snap. And normally what's easiest to do if you want that is to turn off your bounding boxes. And then once you do that, you'll see you're getting you're getting an anchor. So right now this text is center justified, so my snap, my text baseline snap is right here. Now if you change the justification of your text, so that you activate the text tool and you come right here and you change the justification. So I'm going to left justify. It will change the location of that baseline snap. Now it's on the left side. It's right here. It's a little hard to see, but okay. So that's how you can precisely position text, and it supports the you know the four main types of text justification here, right? So left, center, right, fully justified. Okay. You can also change your size in here, your style, your font, your size. Okay, but the other important thing I want to show you is how you adjust your line spacing. So we want to get our text on a baseline grid. So right now the, the text overlaps the vertical lines. That's no bueno. We want to fix that. Okay, so uh, I usually on my documents like a text baseline grid that is two tenths of an inch. So I'm going to go into my document properties, grab my grid, and make the Y spacing two tenths of an inch. You can make it a quarter of an inch or four tenths of an inch, you know, might depend. On, um, it will change depending on the, the document that you're working in. Okay, so what I want to do now is position my text on one row here, one horizontal grid line, and have the next line of text line also line up on a row, but with no overlap. So to do that right now, you can see I need to increase. I need to increase the baseline spacing, and I usually you can have different. Um, Units that you used to do this, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and keep this in points. And so I know I need to be more than 14, and this is just a trial and error thing. I'm gonna try 20. Okay, I'm not um, I'm not hitting that next baseline yet, so let's try 25 points. Okay, so I'm getting close. And when you do that, you gotta it moves your text baseline, so you gotta adjust. 
Okay, so I'm close. I'm still a little short. Let's make the text tool active again and go to 30. Okay, remember you got to readjust every time. Okay, so 30 is too big now because I'm 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 pa I've got enough gap here, but I'm passing over the the next line. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, let's try 28. Okay, 28 is getting super close. Okay, but it's off a little, so I'm gonna try 28.1. Okay, so at 28.1, I'm a little short. So I'm going to try 28.15. Okay, I'm still short there, so it might be 28.2. Now, this, this takes a little time, but once you figure it out for a particular font and font size, that value doesn't change. So you only have to figure this out once. Okay, I'm still a little bit short there. All right, we're getting super close, but those, those small, yeah, see, you gotta look at these other letters. That looks super, yeah, I'm still just a little bit short. We're getting really close though. I think 30 is gonna be too far. You know what? 30, 30 is getting pretty close. These these loops are getting pretty close. I'll try 35. Okay, 35 looks like the right value. If not, it's very close. So what that means is now, when I add rows of text. That's not what I wanted. Let me try this. So you can see it's wrapping down and it's hitting the next row, right? Now you can see as you add more rows, that difference adds up. So I'm still short here, right? So I'm still I'm still a little bit short. Let's try 40. just can't get this I can't get this big enough let's try 28.5 so it helps to have a few rows in your text when you figure this out because the, the difference gets exaggerated as you as you move down okay don't forget every time you do that you have to reset your text baseline okay that looks right that's land that that's landing right where it needs to be Okay, the, the zero is a little over though, so yeah, you know, you got to play around with that a little bit. Um, I might leave it just like that. I think I like the look of that. I'm okay with those those arcs going a little bit under. So that's how you set it up. Set your text up to be on a baseline grid. Okay, and once you have that value set for a font, you're good to go. Now, I will tell you, if you change your font size, it changes the number that. So if we change this to... Um, 28 that doesn't work anymore so you got to go in and readjust that so uh, unlike a program like like Scribus or Scribus that has a, a, a way to automatically set your text to a baseline grid Inkscape mm -hmm. doesn't have that that'd be a cool feature as far as I know it doesn't have it so you got to go in there and manually set set it okay now uh, real quick before we finish I just want to show you guys you can change the fill of your text and you can also, if you go to the fill and stroke dialog, you can also give your, you can also give your, um, you can also give your text a stroke. So it treats text just like um, other shapes, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so a, a lot of programs uh, don't behave that way. Um, so that is how you draw text. Uh, I will probably do some different videos that show you um, how you can align text to other objects. Um, it's a little bit tricky, but there are ways to do that in Inkscape. So 
I'll cover that in, a, in another video. I think in the next video, uh, I'm going to show you a little, a, a few methods you can use in Inkscape to do kind of precision drawing and positioning. Um, the CAD users will need that, and the way you do that in Inkscape is, is a little bit different. So I might take a break from some of the tools and show you that. Um, we still need to cover some other tools. We need to cover the snap, the snap dialog, the snap settings. We need to cover the align and distribute tool for sure. Um, we need to go over grouping, ungrouping, and layers, show you how to organize your drawings. But um, I might take a, take a break from that just to show you some kind of uh, hacks to do precision drawing in Inkscape. So thanks for watching, guys.